Hi, it's Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. So today I'm going to be making picture frames and I'm going to do two slightly different styles and I'll show you in a moment the materials that I'll be using. But first off, I want to give a shout out to some fellow YouTubers who are following along with some of the junk use it or lose it projects. And, you know, they're all at slightly different stages doing different projects at different times and, and, and that's absolutely great that they're doing it. And I'll leave a link below to all of the videos that uh, I've caught up with so far. So those who have been participating are ca sorry, Crafty Samarita or Crafty Samarita, I'm sorry I'm not entirely certain how you pronounce that, Betsy Doodle, Crystal Dragonfly, Maggie Lockley and Nina Rybina. And they're all doing their own slightly different take on the projects and, and, and that's brilliant. So I'll leave links to them below. Also, many thanks for, to everybody that's that's leaving comments on, on these videos. Uh, I'm so delighted to be getting those comments. And thanks also to those of you who are coming up with other suggestions for using some of the materials. So... Uh, I'm still going to be losing stuff at the end of this series, but I might actually hang on to a few things because uh, so many of you have given me some other ideas. So those will be projects for next year, I think. So anyway, th 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 thanks very much for the interest that everyone's showing in this. So today, two, two styles of picture frames. So for the first, I'm going to be using a large piece of cardboard. I'm sorry, I can't get this all in this screen, but I'll, I'll give you the measurements of it in a moment. This one's got, this actually came within a, a box and uh, it's got these kind of fold down flaps but I'll give you the sizes of that in, in just a minute. And from the pieces that I'll cut from that I'll, I'll use the second, pro uh, the, do the second project. I'm also going to be using glue of some description. Now I, I always find that cardboard absorbs a lot of glue so I think today what I'm going to do is for speed apart from anything else because I don't want to leave a lot of time for, for stuff to dry I'm going to use double sided tape and I might even use some of these scrapbook craft dots because I've found these to be quite sticky so I might use them in, in a couple of places. Uh, I'm going to the, the, the first version I'm going to paint, I want it to have a quite a rustic feel, so I'm just going to use some white gesso, perhaps some little bits of blue, there's not much left in these but I'll see what I can get out of them, and maybe a little bit, this is burnt umber, so I might use a little bit of that as well. So obviously a paintbrush, just going to apply that dry. Uh, scissors, though if you're cutting quite thick card as I'm doing, a craft nice a craft knife might be more uh, advantageous. I'm also going to be using a piece of string, but again ribbon, twine, anything of that sort, and some little miniature clothes pegs. And actually I managed to take these out of the pack and put them into a box which has made them a bit tidier. They're, 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 they're very small these. You can see them up against but I will use these as well. But, you know, you could use paper clips or whatever else. For the second version, I'll be using glue or sticky tape again, craft knife, and I'm also just going to use, I've, I've pulled out a couple of decorative papers from one of the packs that I've got that's been sitting around for ages, but you could obviously use painted pages, jelly prints, anything of that sort. You could even use newspaper that you paint over or you could just paint it. So there we go. I'll move this out of the way and then I'll get started. Okay, so as I said, this piece of card was an inset within a box and what I'm going to do is cut these wings off to make it a more manageable size to work with. So I'm just going to cut those off and then I'll be back. Okay, so I have my piece of card cut. Now this, I was going to state the obvious there and say it has two sides. Of course it has two sides, but it has this side which is quite smooth and this side that has a, a slight ridge in it. It's not too pronounced, but I think for the project, certainly for the first project I'm going to do, I want to have this ridged side on show. Sorry, I have ink from another project I was doing earlier. Uh, yeah, so, so I'm going to have it running this way 
I want to make a long frame, so I want to make my cuts along here. I'm stating the obvious, but if I don't state the obvious sometimes I, I actually forget myself. So, this is around... I'm just going to give you rough measurements because obviously the cardboard you have might be different, but this is along around 12... Uh, 14 and a half inches long or wide, whatever by 30, uh, 30, which is about 37 centimetres and it will be roughly the same the other way because it uh, looks roughly square shaped. So I want it to run this way, I'm going to have these lines running this way. So I think in terms of size I want it longer than that way and I want to cut two pieces so I think I'm going to make it I think I'm going to cut at five and a half and that would be 11 to have two the same size. Yeah, so I'm now going to just cut off two pieces, five and a half and then five and a half again. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I now have the two pieces cut to size that I want to use. These are roughly the same. Uh, there's a, a little bit of discre discrepancy here and there, but that was because I don't think it had a completely square angle on it. But this is going to be rustic, so I'm not too worried about that. And I have this smaller piece that I'm going to put to the side for other projects. So, oops, that's out of the way. So what I'm going to do now, I've got my lines running this way. I'm just going to take some gesso, use a dry brush and just kind of brush the gesso and maybe some of the other colours across here just to give it that kind of washed out look, you know, so this could be that kind of farmhouse look, it could be that kind of beach type look, shabby chic, whatever you want to do, you know, paint it the way you want or you could just make it a, a pure solid block of colour. I'm just going to try and get that kind of rough look on that, so I'll do that now. So that's the first piece done. You'll see that I was always trying to paint it in the one direction and that was the direction that those kind of lines were going in. If the cardboard had been more ridged then it would have picked up those lines more but I just wanted to go with that kind of flow and you'll see that it, it gives a bit of a kind of aged wood effect. Maybe a piece of wood that's previously had some, some colour on it that's all kind of come away. So I'm quite happy with that. The fact that I did it with a kind of dry brush means that that won't actually take too long to dry, which is, is something that I'm looking for today. So I'm just going to do the next piece and then I'll be back. Okay, so I now have my two pieces. I've got a little bit of a rough edge here on, on here, so I'm just going to snip that with a pair of scissors. It doesn't matter too much. Uh, You know, I don't mind a rough edge, that bit was just kind of hanging down a bit, so I'm just going to get rid of that. So these are virtually touch dry, that's, yeah. But I will just give them a couple of minutes while I go and make a cup of coffee. I'm just checking sizes. Okay, see they're even dry enough that I can put them together. So give that a minute, make a cup of coffee, and then I'll be back. Okay, so... Just a minute to dry and, and these are fine. So what I'm going to look to do now is to cut a hole in one of them. So one will become the backing board and the other will be the front section of the frame. So I'm just going to put the two together to see which one I want as the back and which one is the front. You can see there's a little bit of runoff here. So I think I'm just going to make them, put them that way. So this will be the front piece and this will be 
the backing board. Now, if you were so inclined, you could also paint that side of it, but this will be up against a wall. Certainly for my purposes, it'll be up against a wall, so I'm not too concerned about that. You could also go round at this stage and finish the edges, but again, I'm not too concerned about that. So that's the way I'm going to cut them. They fit quite neatly in these corners. So what I'm going to do now is take this top piece, so I'll put this well out of the way so I don't cut that by mistake. And I'm going to measure the size that I want to, to, to cut out. Now I find when cutting with a craft knife that the good side, i.e. the less rough side, is the side that I cut into. So I'm actually going to cut in on this side. If I had painted this side then I would be cutting in from, from here, but it just seems to make a neater edge. So, ruler, here we go. So I think I'm going to make it this is an annoying blob that sits on this. I think I'm going to make my frame about three quarters of an inch, which is about a centimetre and a half. So I'm going to measure three quarters of an inch all the way around and I'll just draw it in lightly with pencil. Okay, so I have my line drawn all the way around. Sorry, it's a bit faint to see in places. And all I'm going to do now is take my craft knife and cut along. I'll use a ruler simply because I tend to go a bit offline if I, if I don't. So I'll use my ruler just to, to kind of guide me along and then be back after that. Okay, so I now have my frame cut. Now, if you were handy with a craft knife or scissors, you could make the corners more rounded. You could give it a, a kind of scrolled effect if you want. But as I say, I want this to be kind of rustic. And so I'm just keeping it this way. Sorry for the background noise. There's tractors and combine harvesters and I don't know all what I'm going about today. So that's my frame. I'll keep this to the side for other projects. I think what would be nice would be to make maybe even a smaller frame. Uh, it could then, you know, kind of go beside this. Sorry also there's a bit of glare today, but yeah, so I'm going to keep that aside for another project. So I now bring in, bring in my backing board and you can see how these will fit together. Now again, if your inclination was to have everything neatly finished off. You could take some gesso or paint or whatever and just run it along these inside lines. I'm just going to leave it just now again because I want to move on quickly and actually when, when that's up I don't think it will be noticed so yeah I'm going to leave that like that. So the next thing is simply to put sticky tape, I'm going to use sticky tape around these edges so I can put the two together but the other thing I want to do is to put a piece of string in here that will then act as a kind of line for photos or memo notes or what, whatever to go against so to, to, to kind of hang off so I'll do that as well. Now there's something else that I was going to say, what was it? I don't know, hopefully it'll come back to me once I get my glue and sticky tape. Okay, I can't remember what it was that I was going to say. Uh, if I miss something at the end, I'll certainly let you know if I've, I've made a blooper. So what, what I've done is I've cut a piece of my string. I'm just going to use string because again I want to keep it quite rustic. And this will act as the hanger at the back. And obviously you could distress this with inks or anything like that if you wanted to. So that, that piece is around, oh gosh, uh, four and a half inches or hmm, 12 centimetres. So I'm putting that piece to the side. This piece, I'm going to kind of glue it in the corner here. And I want it to kind of have a, a bit of a hang. I don't want it too tight. So... You know, I don't want it to hang too much either, but roughly kind of like that, I think. I might bring it down a little to about there so that there's room for the... I'm going to use the clothes pegs. Let me get one. Yeah, so I don't want them to get in the way of this. 
this so yeah I'm going to glue it a little bit further down maybe about two thirds of the way so I want it roughly this length and I'll tell you what this length is it is oh, about mm, 13 inches or 34 centimetres maybe. But again, you would adjust it depending on what size of frame you'd actually cut. So before I put the string in place, Shorter bit, leave that off to the side. I'm going to put double tape around here, but I'm also going to put it around here as well because I think that'll just make it hold that bit better. So I'll just do that now. So, what I've done with the backing board, I've glued it to the outside edge, and with the kind of frame bit itself, I've done it to the inside edge and hopefully that way it makes it quite sticky all the way around. So I'm now going to take these off, the tapes off, and then I'm just going to use, I was debating whether to use a hot glue gun or these scrapbook craft dots to attach my string and I think I'm just going to use the, the scrapbook craft dots. So here we go. I remembered what I was going to say. If you're using glue, then you're probably best using uh, quite quite a heavy duty glue because the cardboard does absorb glue a lot and uh, you know you might even need to put a couple of layers on you might even need to put some clips along it to make sure that the cardboard is, is kind of squeezed together so it uh, ad adheres as well as possible so I now put my string on I think I got the dots roughly in the same place. I am hoping that these will be sufficient to hold it. I think so. And that gives me just a little bit of give there. And then it's a case of attaching this side to this side. Now because there's double tape on both sides you probably only get about one chance to do this. So I'm actually standing up so I can line it up better. I need a drum roll. Ta-da! Right, I shall be back in a second. I just want to get a couple of things for here. Okay, a while ago I bought these Tim Holtz Ideology a photo booth collection of vintage photos. I don't know why I bought them. I don't know what was in my mind at the time. I just saw them and thought, oh, oh those would be good for something. So he here's a good for something project that I'm going to use them for. So I've just pulled out a strip at random. Obviously, if you had photos, you know, the little type that you can now get the apps for, for the images that you, you take on your, your uh, smartphone and you can print them out, or if you had any old photographs or concert tickets, anything of that sort, little things that you want to keep. And I am just going to attach these with my mini pegs to my very basic string. Not in any particular way. And there we have it, a very basic, rustic looking sort of memory frame, I guess. Now, you could obviously put embellishments around here. You could, if you want, go around the outside, uh, really whatever you want to do. The, the, sorry, the one other thing I need to do is to put on my piece on the back here. And I think I'm just going to put a piece of tape over that just now. Just to hold it in place, I'll put something stronger on it later. Roughly the middle, I'll just eyeball it. That's what happens when the ruler's bigger than when the 
cards bigger than the ruler. So maybe a bit there. As I say, I'll put something a bit stronger on there later, but it shows you how it works. So, yeah, so that's it. My memory frame. Or it could be used as a little notice board, you could pin post-it notes to it, or whatever. So I, I'm actually quite pleased the way that's turned out. Okay, so I'm going to take one of those insets that I cut out, and I'm going to make a, a smaller frame this time, and I think I'm going to make it around, let's say, three inches. And three inches will be one, two, three, four, around seven point two point three centimeters. So I'm just going to draw a line down there. That's yeah, so it's just over three inches that way, so I'm not going to bother about that little bit. So I'm going to cut two pieces at three inches. Okay, so I have my two pieces cut. Now, because these aren't entirely square, what I've done is I've marked where the top is, just so that I know, just so I know that I've got them both the same way. So what I'm now going to do is to measure the size of the piece I want to cut out in whichever one is going to be the top one. And they're basically the same. And because these are going to be covered uh, with paper, it doesn't matter as much given that there's a, a slight edge on them. So I'll work out the size that I want the frame to be. So I'm going to make it a half inch all round. And I will just measure that out. So I've cut, uh, sorry, I've, I've measured that out and I'm now going to cut this piece out. So I now have my two pieces. This one will be the backing board and this one will be the frame in front. And what I'm now going to do is to cover each of these with some uh, paper from a paper stack. So I think I'm going to make this one the background and what I'm going to do is just cut it a little bit bigger so that I can fold the edges round. You could of course do it that you wrap the whole thing round but I'm going to leave maybe half an inch all the way around that one and and I'm going to do the same with this piece. So I'll come back once I've cut these two pieces of paper. Okay, so for ease, I've just cut them at four and a half by four and a half all round. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the backing piece and I shall put some sticky tape around. I'm going to leave that to the outside so I know that way is up. I'm going to put some sticky tape around here and then stick it to down to my paper like so. Okay, so what we're now going to do is to fold this over. And again, I'm just going to mark an arrow in the middle here. I do know which way is up now because of my paper, but just to make sure that I don't make any uh, mistakes. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can either just cut a square or squarish out the corners, like so, or you can cut along at an angle and really... It, it, it's up to you in terms of whichever you prefer. If you cut it at the angle and you pull it over, you'll, you'll have a little bit of a fold there, but uh, really, personal preference. I often just do the square, so I think I'm going to do that this time. Okay, 
and all I'm going to do now is to put again some double sided tape obviously if you had one of those little machines one of those little runner things they're quite handy uh, I managed to break two of them at the weekend so I don't have any of them left so I'm just using my double sided tape Okay, so I just pulled that tight round edges as tight as I could and that now becomes my backing board. So what I now want to do with this is I want it roughly centred and again there's a couple of ways to do this. The way I'm going to do it is to cut a slightly smaller hole in the middle here. Now you might well be saying well that's not terribly neat but actually it doesn't have to be too neat. So what I'm now going to do is roughly centre that. I'm going to put some tape around this again and stick it to here and then we'll do the next stages. So I'm going to do this inside piece first and what I'm going to do here is snip to the corners Then I'm going to pull these over Okay, and you'll see that on the inside that starts to make a neater finish So what I'm going to do now is just to take a little piece of tape to keep these in place So that's that bit. Now I've just marked my up arrow again so I, I know which side's top. If you have any overhang here you just want to cut those back just so it doesn't make a, a untidy fold here. So what we want to do with this one is as we did with the back of this except here if you likely to have any overhang it's probably easier just to, to trim it back at this stage. So I'm just going to take a fraction of all around. It's not too bad but I just need to take a little bit off so I'll just cut around here and as before I'm just going to cut the little squares out and then attach some tape and fold these over. Now what I would say at this point is uh, attach tape to this piece and make sure that there's none of it showing when it comes down here so you don't want any loose tape sticking here and I'll, I'll, I'll explain why in a minute. Now with this top piece you'll see that I do have a little overhang of tape there. I've not taken the sticky bit off here but I'm going to cut that off now because when I close this I don't want it sticking to the back piece. It doesn't matter so much the sides and the bottom but as I'm going to insert a photograph from the top I want to make sure that that piece is left open so I'll trim this away just to make sure there's no stickiness there Okay, so now we have the two pieces that go together Now. There are obviously lots of different things you, you can do with this. Once these are stuck together you could go round it with something else to make uh, another binding around the edge. I, I quite like this, just the way it sits together, but uh, really again it's down to kind of individual preference. What I want to be able to do, and I've taken another photograph out, and I actually thought this matched up quite well. It's another one from the, the Tim Holtz collection. You'll see it has kind of pinks and greens in the back. I'd like to say I planned it but I didn't but that photo will fit in there. Now you could make this a bigger opening so that you see more of the background paper uh, or you could simply have it at this kind of size. If it was something that you were going to keep in that frame 
for always, then what you want to do is to leave an opening at the top here. Sorry, if, if you're, you're keeping it in the frame for always, forever, then you can seal all the edges. You know, you'd put your photograph in and seal all the edges. However, if it's a frame that you want to maybe use different photos in, then you would want to keep that top edge open. So if you have a rough idea of the size of photos that you want to be putting in, then you can then make your frames accordingly. So what I'm going to do now is use tape again, but just to go around these three edges and I'll leave this top piece open. Okay, so I've tied it up there a bit. Uh, I've just attached the string to the back again. You could use ribbon. If, if you wanted, you could actually create, you know, so if this was something you wouldn't have sitting on a table rather than on, uh, you know, hang, hanging on a wall, you could simply create a triangle piece. In fact, you could almost get away with just attaching something like that, but probably a triangle piece that you'd just attach onto the back and it would then stand like so. But because I've left the opening at the top, a photograph can slip in. So if it was slightly bigger, the only thing you need to be careful of is because I've used the double sided tape, if you're pushing something too far down, there is just the possibility that it would get caught there. As I say, if you use a slightly smaller picture, you could always use a, a photograph, uh, you know, the sticky things you can put on the back of photographs to stick into albums, to stick it in place, and you would then see more of the background. But I'm actually quite happy with the way that's, that's looking overall. So that's my projects for today. You could obviously adapt either of these frames in, in whatever way you wanted. You could take some distress inks and go around them. Uh, you could add some flowers around the edges or other embellishments. You know, you could make something uh, quite bright if it was for a kid's room. You could have beads stuck onto it. Really, the, 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 there's so many different things you could do with these. I, I, I quite like the kind of simplicity of these and uh, yeah so, so I'm not feeling the need at this stage to actually add in anything to them. This kind of thing you know you could also use as a notice board. Go into my studio, do not disturb or anything of that sort but I quite like it as that kind of memory board idea and I, I, I do like this for little photographs and you could make it much bigger. Same principles would ap apply, you just change the sizes a bit. So, so that's it for this week's junk, use it or lose it. I should say if you wanted to use cereal boxes, you know, some, some thinner cardboard than this, that's possible. All you might need to do is, is to double sum up, you know, so, so stick layers together just to give you that kind of depth and sometimes cereal boxes depending on the, the the brand they can be a bit thinner than others but uh, yeah so I hope you've enjoyed this as always let me know if you've made anything and uh, if you're making videos please tag me tag me also on Facebook Instagram or Twitter I've had a bit of a, an issue with my 
Twitter and my Instagram recently. Uh, I use them, I access them on my phone and, and the apps kept closing, so I've not been able to use them, but I think it was because my memory on my phone was absolutely full. I have so many photographs on it, it was taking up so much space. So I need to do some clearing out of that and then I'll hopefully be back on Twitter and Instagram very soon. So if you like this project, please give it the thumbs up. If you're new to my channel and you're not yet a subscriber, please subscribe. I'd love to have you here. Uh, once again, thanks for all the lovely and amazing comments that, that you're giving me in, in terms of uh, this particular series. I'm, I'm so pleased that so many of you are getting something out of it. So, yes, thank you very much for that. So, bye for now.